Hi, I'm Eleanor from Girls Globe and I'm here in Durban at the International AIDS Conference 2016. Today we've been at the Youth Pavilion talking to young people about the role youth play in the fight against HIV and AIDS, also about how they're empowering young women and girls through their work and about what they've learned at this week's conference in South Africa. So why do you think young people are so important in ending HIV and AIDS? Well I think uh, the biggest issue at the moment is that HIV and AIDS is currently affecting them the most and they're the future generation so they generally need to step up and make their voices heard and end this epidemic. Well I think the facts are, are very very clear. Young people are more vulnerable to HIV than anybody else because we're more likely to be having unsafe sex and part of that is because we don't know any better so it's very very important for young people to be on the table, to be included and again nothing about us without us which effectively means if you're going to have policies that affect young people then young people need to be involved in the creation of those policies. So can you share an example with me of when you empowered girls and women to join the fight against HIV? So um, yes, I have one case in particular. There was this young woman living with uh, she she has dis with disabilities. Okay. So the problem is that the community they didn't necessarily pay attention to her. So she was just left alone after school. She would go home and then just sit day there. So most of the guys they would take advantage of her. They would sleep with her, have sex with her, do whatever that they want to do with her. And then when the people that her parents came back home, they wouldn't say uh, they they wouldn't believe her when she said, you know, somebody was touching me like that. And and it's very rare for people to, to trust a person with disabilities. So what I had did is that I went and spoke to the parents that this is a things that are happening and this is a real issue. If your child is being treated like this, what if they infect her? What if they kill her one of the days? Because the, she is starting to realize that what they are doing is very wrong. So we managed to take her to the clinic get her tested and then now yeah, most of the special schools in Artridge will, we have two special schools so the special schools that actually paid attention they teach them comprehensive uh, sexual education in their own capacity the way they should be taught. Absolutely well at 25 years old I was elected onto the district health board as the youngest in history so nobody younger than 25 has ever been elected to a district health board That's in my country cool. which is very very empowering for young people because it kind of mainstreams the idea of young people in positions of influence and in positions of decision making. I haven't really done anything specific for young women in terms of gender equality but I am a big fan of including all minority groups and all marginalized groups as well because you know the, the, the struggle affects everybody and, and women's rights are equality rights and so you can't really claim to be a social activist if you're not passionate about women and, and, the, and their inclusion. Uh, work with support group, we meet on Saturdays once a month and they are young children that were born HIV positive and are faced with stigma um, and they come together, sit in a support group, talk about real issues and are there for one another and I am there as an older person, as a sister, as someone who's lived a little bit longer than them just to say actually it's okay, there's so much more and to help guide them and keep them positive. So can you tell me what your key takeaways from the conference are, what have you learned? Well I think that networks are very very important and that was demonstrated uh, a lot this week. You know, who you know really does make a big difference in the sector. Understanding the role of the pharmaceutical industry and the cost of uh, treatment and the cost of advocacy. So what is the role of like governments as well who tend to, you know, what they, how they respond to civil society is, is very very crucial. I mean if they're accommodating then the issues are a lot more transparent. If they're, if they're very, very hostile towards civil society, then I find that you know, a lot of activists are at risk. Uh, they're very, very vulnerable to violence and to being censored. And there's a whole lot of issues around the treatment of civil society and the results that come from that. So if, if civil society is encouraged and promoted across the board, then the results are, are a lot more stronger. It's been a hectic week, like a lot of things happening all at once. I've uh, managed to sit in a couple of good um, plenaries, just talking about treatment, about PrEP and unpacking the concerns around that still and being an activist and the importance of linking science with activism to make a change. So it's been really great in understanding that linkage. Ooh, I've learned a lot of things, you know, policies regarding policies. I've realized that I had so much capacity when it comes to community, but that there are certain things when it comes to policies that are putting just 
touring the line there saying, you know what, you can't do this. So what I've learned is that I need to be part of the policy makers when it comes to decision making. I need to be there so that I can mobilize for my girls, I can talk for my girls. Because some of the policies, they're not catering them. They're just saying, you know what, just be there. You're not wanted.